So the Suicide Squad is already out in Ireland and parts of Europe, so I was lucky enough to get to see it yesterday, and this review is going to be as spoiler free as possible, so no serious plot details, just kind of talking about my overall feelings and the basics of what I liked and didn't like and things like that. But really quick before getting into this review, I just want to ask if you can subscribe if you're not already. I make DC and Marvel videos every single week and new subscribers really do help to keep up the motivation to make new videos. But yeah, so The Suicide Squad was pretty much a soft reboot of the film that quite a lot of people weren't a fan of. And I just want to say that this film improves on almost every single aspect of the 2016 version. The elements it brings back are much better used here. The new characters are so much more interesting than the likes of Slipknot and Killer Croc and people like that. Idris Elba's Bloodsport actually really blew me away. Like, I was expecting to like his character for sure because in the trailers he was a standout for me. But I would go as far as to say that he is now one of my favourite characters that we've seen in a DC movie. Like, he was that good. And it's, it's pretty impressive how James Gunn took so many kind of really really z-list characters and made them so great like say what you want about the the 2016 suicide squad other than like el diablo and slipknot most of those characters were pretty well established dc characters like they weren't really digging too deep into dc lore for them like they were characters that you know if you were just kind of a basic fan of batman or a basic fan of flash you kind of knew of people like captain boomerang and killer croc whereas here almost everyone here other than like king shark and obviously returning characters like harley quinn and um, Cam Boomerang and Rick Flagg. Almost all of these characters are Z-list characters that most people who just kind of like the movies and like the TV shows would never have heard of. So it's pretty impressive that James Gunn took so many of these Z-list characters and made them so much better than what they were in the comics. Uh, Daniela Melcher, who plays, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but who she plays um, Ratcatcher 2, was also a serious standout for me. Like a lot of the heart and more emotional moments from the film sort of stem from her character and her world and what she's going through. But she still gets some hilarious moments as well. Uh, John Cena's Peacemaker can be a tiny bit grating when he's first introduced. So if you've seen the trailers, you probably know what I mean. Like there are are a lot of dick jokes and things like that surrounding his character but I feel like around the second act that really rounds out and the character in general becomes a lot more interesting as you really get into what makes him tick like those dick jokes and stuff like that they're they're kind of present for his character throughout the movie but they're the first act is where it's most prevalent and after that he does kind of get a lot more interesting um, I've never been much of a fan of Harley Quinn in anything really. I think Margot Robbie does a great job at playing her. But as a character, I've always thought she's been a little bit on the annoying side. However, no joke, there is one scene in this film that is hands down my favourite scene involving Harley Quinn in the entire DCU. Like, I really did love this scene so, so much. Uh, Joe Kinnaman is also fantastic as Colonel Rick Flagg. He was one of the better parts of the 2016 version for sure, but here he was just better. He felt like much more of a character you can root for and get behind, considering that everything he was doing in the 2016 version seemed to only be for Enchantress. Now, obviously, most of the rest of the cast are fantastic too, and there is a huge cast. So if I was going to start listing every character I liked, I'd be here all day. But these are the ones that really, really, really did stand out for me. Now, one thing I was genuinely worried about going into this film was James Gunn's style of humour. Because I love Guardians of the Galaxy 1, but in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, I feel like James went far too overboard with certain types of jokes. And then there'd be moments in that movie that would start off incredibly emotional and serious, only to be completely undercut by a joke, which would in turn completely ruin the emotion of that scene. And I honestly was really worried this would happen in this film. Um, even in the trailer with a lot of Peacemaker's dick jokes, it, I really did get that vibe, that there wouldn't be a whole lot of serious or emotional films or stakes sorry there wouldn't be a whole lot of serious or emotional moments in this film um, but I was completely wrong honestly because there is a very clear divide between what scene is supposed to be emotional heavy and what scene is supposed to make you laugh now sure there are definitely one or two scenes that get a little let down by a joke but as a whole I thought there were some extremely well done emotional scenes in this film with that didn't have a joke in sight and I really did appreciate that because jokes are great and all that but I it's when jokes start to deliberately ruin an emotional scene that it, I start to get a little bit kind of annoyed with them. Now while the film has an incredibly strong start, and I mean you get dumped into the action immediately, I think that the film loses a tiny bit of its punch in the second half for a little bit. There is about a 30 or 40 minute segment where I wasn't too interested in a lot of the things happening and whatnot, but the film really does pick up again towards the end of that second act, and then gives us probably one of my favourite third acts in a DC film. 
I also remember back at DC Fandom last year when people were saying some of this film is like a 1960s action film and that becomes very apparent very fast because this film feels very much in the vein of the Dirty Dozen for the way the font of the logo is used, the way it handles characters, there are even some shots and some zoom ins at points that just screamed 1960s action film to me but it really worked honestly. It gave this film a unique style that sets it apart from Guardians of the Galaxy and really any other comic book film I could think of. I also remember in that DC Fandom stuff they were talking about how don't get attached, I think it was a uh, Joel Kinman saying that don't get too attached to the characters. Now, they said that for the first Suicide Squad as well, when in that movie we didn't really lose a whole lot of characters at all. Um, I will just say that nobody is safe in this film. You are going to be very, 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 very shocked and surprised how many characters that you expect to survive don't. So just be really, really do not get attached. Like, the first film, it said this was the Suicide Squad, and then they killed, like, Slipknot and El Diablo and... I can't remember who else they killed. Uh, in this, they say don't get attached. They really do mean do not get attached. Um, but it, it works. It, it it really does help to keep the stakes serious, keep the keep everything kind of intense because you really have no idea what is going to happen at any moment. Uh, and that's this is one of the few times where the trailers I felt did not give us an idea of how most of the film was going to play out. Like I I have this habit of when I'm watching a comic book movie, especially. You know, there's a serious moment where I'm like, well, the character's obviously not going to die here because I've seen them at, at this other point in the trailer that hasn't shown up in the movie yet. Um, I'm just going to say they do a very, a very well done way of making sure that what you've seen in the trailer really does throw you off because there are moments where I'm like, well, they can't die here because I've seen I've seen them at a different point in the trailer. Um, and yeah, just don't have that mindset because I had that mindset and I still was shocked so many times um but the soundtrack is superb as well and i mean both the ost and the songs they choose to use uh the songs aren't used near as much as in the 2016 version because it felt like in the 2016 version every single scene had a new song choice in the background but here they are used much more sporadically and that means when you do get a scene with a song it works much better but yeah honestly i was just really happy with this film i think the characters are fantastic and you're going to love most if not all of them I think it's great, and while there are a few tiny pacing issues around the middle, the film quickly fixes that to make one of the coolest, almost like a horror-esque third act that we've ever seen in a comic book movie, so I absolutely think you should watch this if you can, and yes, I know over in the US it's going to be on HBO Max as well as in cinemas, but I think that this really is a film worth seeing on the big screen if you can. Like normally I don't get that feeling, but here I do, I think there are moments that I wouldn't have been near as in awe by unless I saw them on the biggest screen I could. But have you seen The Suicide Squad yet? Are you planning on seeing it? Let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and all of that. I hope you have a great day.